In this video, I'm going to cover chronic wasting disease and its impact on Texas deer. I'm also going to cover a few facts about the disease, like how long it's been around, its history and locations in Texas, and I'm going to cover a few of the most recent case counts. Welcome to Landowner TV, where I make you smarter about your property one video at a time. On this channel, I cover topics that landowners frequently have questions about. Topics like wildlife and cattle, conservation, transacting real estate, and I also like to cover current topics just like this one. So if you're a landowner or just someone who loves to learn about land, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you can learn right along with us. All right, so let's jump right in. Chronic wasting disease is a neurological disease that impacts the cervid family. And that's the family that includes deer, elk, caribou, and moose. By the way, did you know that moose is actually the plural of moose? Like look at all those moose. I for one think we should call them meese. Now chronic wasting disease belongs to a family of diseases called prion diseases or transmissible spongiform encephalopathies. Stay with me now because prion diseases actually impact both humans and animals. The family of diseases includes mad cow disease, scrapie in sheep and goats, and Creutzfeldt Jacobs disease in humans. Now a prion is a type of protein that causes other normal proteins in the brain to fold abnormally. Issues begin when certain types of prions begin to accumulate in the brain and other tissues, and they begin to cause neurological distress, emaciation, and then ultimately death. Now in the case of chronic wasting disease, transmission occurs when a healthy animal encounters prions that have been shed from an unhealthy animal. And this can come from the animal's saliva, blood, feces, urine, or the carcass. The problem is that these annoying prions can persist in the environment for a very long time, requiring sound mitigation strategies to combat the spread of the disease. And according to Texas Parks and Wildlife, fully eradicating the disease becomes impossible once the disease has become established in a localized population. And this is quite frankly a huge pain in the ass and the reason that researchers and state agencies are taking it so seriously. Now, chronic wasting disease was first discovered in the U.S. back in 1967 at a captive deer facility in Colorado. And since then, it's spread out through the United States and also Canada. Check this out. You can see that it's currently most pervasive in the upper Midwest, the Western Great Plains, and the southern part of Canada. Now, the disease was first detected in Texas back in 2012 in some free-ranging populations of mule deer out in West Texas in an area called the Waco Mountains. Yes, that is pronounced Waco. Now, the first actual whitetail with chronic wasting disease was discovered in Texas in 2015 out of captive deer facility in Medina County. And that's a really cool county just west of San Antonio. Now, after it was discovered at that facility, additional facilities in the area were then tested. And subsequently, it was found that four additional facilities in the area and two deer release sites were shown to have chronic wasting disease. And according to an article by the Caesar Clayburg Wildlife Research Institute in South Texas, which by the way is a really cool research institute for any of those of you interested in deer and quail or anything in South Texas you want to find information on, go to check out that website. But they have research that indicates that chronic wasting disease was then found in free-ranging populations in Medina County just two years after the first case was discovered. Now since we found that first diseased mule deer in West Texas back in 2012, Texas has now documented over 270 cases. At least that's through 2021. And I charted out right here the total case count by year by species. And as you can see, the vast majority of species impacted by chronic wasting disease in Texas have been white-tailed deer, with about 78% of total cases overall. But other species impacted have included obviously mule deer like I mentioned, but also elk and red deer. Another way to look at this information is to really break it out between a portion of cases that have been found in captive facilities versus in free-ranging populations. But before we get into that, I do want to time out and say, look, we're covering a lot of information really quickly. For those of you who digest information better by reading it, check out the full article that I wrote about this topic on landassociation.org. It's going to have all the charts and even more information that I mentioned here in the video. Okay, back to the video. Overall, 65% of the cases in Texas have been found within captive facilities. And that includes 52 of the 64 cases found in 2021. So let's break this down just like I promised and give you an indication of where the heck these cases are even coming from because Texas is a huge state. Let's cover the cases found in captive facilities first, 
check this out. These are the counties known to have cases within captive facilities since 2012. Uvalde, Medina, Kimball, Hunt, Lavaca, Duval, Mason, and Matagorda counties all have had cases within captive populations since 2012. Now clearly some of these counties have had way more cases than others. Combined, Uvalde and Medina counties represent 88% of the total cases in captive facilities in Texas. And those two counties are neighbors, and like I mentioned earlier, they're just west of San Antonio, right here. And these include several cases that were found in 2021. All right, so now let's look at the cases that have been found in free-ranging populations. Check this out. Hudspeth, Hartley, El Paso, Medina, Dallum, Valverde, and Lubbock counties have all had cases in free-ranging populations. So there's our friend Medina County again. And you can see from a free-ranging perspective, case counts are much more spread out without a couple of counties with excessive spikes. Okay, so now you know what chronic wasting disease is and where it's been in Texas. So what the heck are we doing about it? Now, you may have noticed from that USGS map that I posted just a minute ago that there are a few hotspots in North America, and Texas, comparatively, seems to be pretty cool. That's because that researchers believe that Texas is early in the infection cycle. Therefore, agencies are pushing really hard to combat the spread before it gets serious. Texas Parks and Wildlife seems to be leading the charge here and have implemented testing and reporting sites for those hunters who harvest whitetail, mule deer, or any other species susceptible to chronic wasting disease in Texas. And these precautions have already been underway in the Trans-Pecos, the Panhandle, and the South Central Zones of Texas. These areas are known as chronic wasting disease surveillance and containment zones. And if you're a hunter in these zones in Texas, you have to bring your animal to a check station within 48 hours after harvest. Now, as you can see on this map, Texas Parks and Wildlife has set up around 26 checkpoints right now for hunters to be able to go take their animals and get tested. I'll mention too that Parks and Wildlife has also implemented some carcass movement restrictions around Texas to prevent the spread of the disease. And essentially, for cervid species like I just mentioned, it limits either bringing pieces of the animal in or out of the state or in and out of some of those zones. There's a whole list of regulations that I won't get into for the purposes of this video, but if you do have questions about them, here's where to go. Texas Parks and Wildlife has a dedicated chronic wasting disease page that covers all of these things, including information about the checkpoints. For even more information about chronic wasting disease, you can go to the CDC website or go check out some of the information that I mentioned before that the Caesar Clayburg Wildlife Research Institute has put out. I'm a big fan of theirs, in case you can't tell. Hey, I hope you found this video informative. I couldn't cover all of the details, but I did the best job I could. If you have more questions, feel free to reach out or leave a comment in the video. And if you're wanting to learn even more about land in Texas, please hit that subscribe button so we can see you on the next one. Thanks so much.